and get the enjoyment. Proverbs chapter 14. In the in the book of Proverbs, where we're at now is looking at and studying how well are we doing. I say all the time, I get people that come up to me in the public ministry, oh, I'm good. All right. Well, Stolly, where can I find in the Bible good? Well, so far, Proverbs, what we've been studying, yay and nays, right and wrong, verse by verse. Look at our conduct. Where do we stand? Because the following chapter is what we've been doing. Solomon lays out almost every verse, almost every verse, not all. This is a good, this is a bad. This is wicked, this is righteous. Now, where do you stand? Yeah, we're saved, we're going to heaven, glory to God, but what's our life, our conduct before God as a Christian? Proverbs 14, verse 1. Every wise woman buildeth her house, but the foolish plucketh it down with her hands. We got a wise woman, and we got a foolish woman. The wise woman buildeth her house. The foolish pluck it down. Destroys. All right. Wife, mother, what are you doing with your house? As a Christian, are you helping your husband and your children in the growth of your house? Or are you destroying? Are you, as Abraham would say, Sarah, you want to make some bread, get some milk and butter while I get the calf? We got some visitors. Thank you, hon. Appreciate it. Or are you Lot's wife? Lot got the butter. Lot got the milk. Got, Lot got the calf. His, his wife didn't do nothing. Are you cumbered about like Martha? Or are you there at the word of God like Mary? Because a wise woman will build her house. She'll make it strong. She'll make it. But a foolish woman plucks it down with her hands. If you are a woman and you are a Christian woman, are you building your house, verse 1, or are you destroying your house, verse 2? Say, well, how do I destroy my house? You don't reverence your husband, like Paul says to the wife. You don't care the Bible, you don't care anything, God and the Word of God, you care for yourself in the world. Verse 2, verse chapter 14. Again, how do you look at the verses? A good woman buildeth a, a bad woman. I mean, a woman that comes up to me, oh, I'm good. And you waste your money on alcohol, tobacco, and other things against your husband and your children. No, you're not good. He that walketh in his uprightness feareth the Lord. But that he is, but he that is perverse. In the way despises him God. So there's one that walketh upright and feareth God. And then there's the perverse. In his way. You're trying to do right. You're trying to be perfect. And you fear God. And yes, we don't have a license to sin. But when we do sin... I mean, we really fear that, you know, we had upset and displeased our Lord. But a perverse, in his ways, plural, the works of the man that's perverse, has no due regard to God. How's your living? Are you doing everything in your life so that God can be pleased? Or are you, well, you know, I got this, I got that, I got my life, you know. I go Sunday morning. In the mouth of the foolish is the rod of pride. 
but the lips of the wise shall preserve them. Got a foolish man and a wise man. And out of the foolish mouth he speak. A rod of pride. Now we're going to see through the book of Proverbs, Psalm is going to say the rod is chastening. A rod is a, Aaron had a almond stick tree rod. It was solid. The mouth of the forest, a rod of pride. Pride is never good. And then the opposite, lips of the wise, preserve them, the wise. The pride makes a man to speak things that he cannot do. It's an abomination to God, pride, and the lips. Where no oxen are, <clears throat> the crib is clean. But much increase is by the strength of the oxen. And you just read that verse and go through and you say, oh, yeah, what? All right, the oxen, the crib, that's where oxen sleep and live. That's a little pen you bring them home in. If it's clean, there's no auction there. There's no oxen taking his food and shoving it all around. There's no oxen poop. There's no oxen pee. Why? Because there's no ox. But the increase, the increase of crops, that ox goes out and plows the field, works the instruments of the farmer. By the strength of the ox. So what Solomon is saying, all right, you ain't got an ox and the place is clean? Great, you ain't got no food. That farming is more than going out plowing, plowing the field. Farming's more than going out and working the mill, you know, you know, where they had Samson work in the mill instead of the animal. Solomon says, hey, you want crops? You want food? He also got to bring that ox to a place where he's going to poop, he's going to pee, he's going to make a mess of his food. There's more to farming than just going out farming. But if you got a clean, a clean crib area, Ain't got no food. A faithful witness will not lie. Oh, I could spend all year on that one. But a false witness will utter lies. All right, so what do you got? You got a faithful witness and you got a false witness. Do you lie? Then you're not a false. You are not a faithful witness. You're a false witness. Look at the verse. Look at what your lips are doing. If you lie as a Christian, you're not faithful. You're you're under false witness. A faithful witness will not lie, but a false witness will utter lies. Now let's take it one step, and I'm going to try to be very brief as possible. But let's take it in the realm of the gospel. And you bring to the people a lie. You're a false witness. You say this prayer. And you'll be sick. That's a false witness. You come knocking on someone's door. Well, Jesus is not God. You're not a Jehovah witness. You're a false witness. A faithful witness will not lie. Let me tell you, this is what the Bible says. The Bible says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And for those that do, who are in their sins and die in their sins, they're going to a place called hell. They're going to a place of the wrath of God. You're not going to get that. You're not going to get to heaven. You're not going to get the peace of God. You got to receive the love of God. You got to receive the gift of God. And the Bible says the only way to, to get that gift of God and receive the love of God 
is by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. You see that it says right there? You see that verse of scripture? You see this place of scripture? Do you see this place of scripture? That's a faithful witness. Well, why don't you come out to our movie night and we'll have a great movie and how to, it's about Jesus. And you can get saved about our movie from Jesus. And our church is getting a popcorn machine. <laughs> All right, let, let's look at let's look at the movie about Jesus. Let's say it's about Jesus. The man that plays Jesus is not Jesus, liar. If there's a man to proclaim to be John the Baptist, he's not John the Baptist, liar. If there's a woman to say she's Mary, she's not Mary, she's a liar. And if you have the nativity scene of Jesus being born and you got a little baby. That's a doll. That's not Jesus. That's a lie. If you got somebody who plays Peter, they're not Peter. That's a lie. If you got somebody John, they're not John. They're a lie. Someone plays Paul. They're they're not Paul. Have you got the context? Your Christian movies are lies. We're taking it right out of the Bible. We did a movie about Noah. Is his name Noah? You're a liar. You're a false witness. Faith cometh by hearing, not by watching. That's why people hate me. Because I put the strength out there. I put it, what is that? The Bible doesn't say go watch the Bible. It says they hear the Bible. To go in the world and preach the gospel, not go in the world. Come to my church. Come to my church so Sunday morning the Christians can get goat food all day long and no sheep food. Where do you stand? Faithful witness or false witness? A scorner seeketh wisdom and findeth it not. Now you may be in a public ministry, you may go out there and you may be dealing with a nuclear physicist. You may deal with a doctor who can do cancer research and, and maybe brain surgery. But if he mocks the word of God and he mocks you for preaching the word of God and he mocks the Bible that you have and he mocks the gospel tract that you give them, that guy has no, no wisdom at all. So what is wisdom? It's the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you don't know Jesus Christ, you're a mocker. But knowledge is easy. That's the first time easy shows up in the Bible. Unto him that understandeth. Understandeth what? What the scorner rejects. And what does the scorner reject? Jesus. What is the one that gets understanding? He knows Jesus. And it's easy to know Jesus if you understand Jesus in his word. It's so hard to be a Christian. That's the first time easy shows up in the Bible. And the reference is to Jesus in the Word of God. You can know easily the Word of God by believing the Word of God. But if you're going to mock the Bible, I'm not going to read it. I don't read it. That can't be so. Written by men. Blah, 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 blah. You don't know nothing. You don't know nothing. That's why the Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God. You know, uh, let me throw my five cents in here, and you don't have to believe what I'm going to say. But it came up. I'll take this rabbit tail. The Bible says to study and show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be shamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, you can take this, crumple up, and throw it in the garbage, okay? If, it's not Bible, but it could. Why would God tell us to study if maybe there's not going to be a test? You know what? He gives you tests on this earth. He'll bring people into you. No ask you questions. Do you? Peter says you, you, you give the hope. I think the hope of the glory to answer them. So go from the presence of a foolish man when thou perceivest not in him the lips of knowledge. When you come across a fool, 
and he has marked himself as a fool. Don't spend all day with him. See, that, that's what the devil does to soul winners. And I've done this. You spend hours dealing with this one person, you ain't getting nowhere. And you're not going anywhere. And the devil may have sent him just to waste your time. When you perceive it that he is foolish, you are in the presence of foolish men. Say, uh, you know what? Just let me leave you this gospel track and let me tell you, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and I shall be saved. We're getting nowhere. I got to move on. Can I get your name so I can put you in my prayer list? And then move on. You're either going to plant a seed or you're going to water. All right. Let God give the increase. And the increase may not be that day. The wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way. But the folly of fools is deceit. We got a prudent and we got a fool. We've got wisdom of prudence, man, and we got the folly of fool. We've got a man to understand his way, God's way, and your own way. And yet the fool is deceit. There are people out there walking in religion and in education. And they haven't got the foggiest idea where they're going. And there's a man that's got wisdom and you're prudent and you understand God. I am going to a place called heaven, New Jerusalem. I am going through the understanding of the finished work of Jesus Christ. I know the way. And that's God's way. And then God may say to you, we're, we're having a thing today, I mean, recently, we're having an issue with the, with the farmer's market. And I've been asked the other day, as far as the farmer's market, is that where God wants you? Yes. He doesn't want you anywhere else. No. My way right now today is God's way of, it's the, I know God wants me at the farmer's market. I'm going to heaven. But until I get to heaven, that ministry, the farmer's market, God has understood my way. And there's no deceit. Now, if you're going to bring people to another way, you're going to use religion, you're going to use something other, then you are foolish and you are deceiving people. You know what God thinks of a man that has religion or education or ignorance? He calls you a fool. The fool has said in his heart that there is no God. Fools make a mock at sin. But among the righteous, there is favor. So we got the fool again, and we got the righteous. You can't be righteous and you can be a fool. Now, when we did our study of fool, we looked at every word of the word fool, foolish, fools in the Bible. And I found myself to be a fool. But you said, Stiley, the fool, I needed to repent of that sin. I need to confess that sin. For God to forgive me and God to cleanse me and I needed to work on that foolishness so that foolishness was not in my life and will not be in my life. Therefore now I can be righteous. See a righteous will know when he's been foolish. Fools mock sin. And you hear them. They brag about their sin. I drank this amount of uh, beer. I went with this amount of women. I went to this ball game. I've done this. He's the greatest president. I had to say that. But you can also be a Christian and mock sin. And you can deceive yourself and not receive favor of God. And you say, well, how can I do that as a Christian? I can sin, it's okay to sin, it doesn't bother God. It's because of this excuse, I can do my sin. Or the other attitude is, well, you know, all I got to do is just confess my sin and, you know, Jesus is going to forgive me. So I can continue to sin. That's mocking sin. 
That is God giving you the freedom to do whatever you want to do and just plead the blood of Jesus Christ. It'll be hunky-dory. No, it won't. How man treats sin is how God will treat the man. Listen, we're going to sin. We're still sinners. If it upsets you and it bothers you to, in that sin, God loves the fact is that we're battling it. We're trying to stop. Even when we do it. And we don't try to write it off. The heart knoweth his own bitterness. And the stranger does not intermeddle with his joy. You know what causes you bitterness. You know what gets you anger. Only you know your heart and your feelings. Somebody used to tell me, <coughs> excuse me, well, I know what you feel. I know, no, no, you don't know how I feel. The house of the wicked, oh boy, don't want to live there, shall be overthrown. But the tabernacle of the upright shall flourish. The wicked man, he has a house. The upright has a tabernacle. What's a tabernacle? It's a tent. It, it, it's, it's funny, the Bible tabernacle is a tent. The tabernacle that Moses built was a tent. And then you get Baptist tabernacle. It's not a tent. It's a building. It's a house. Woo! The house of the wicked. Read Revelation chapter 3 about the Lazarusian church age. Woo! You know what a tent is? You pack it up and you move. You know what a house and building? You stay planted. Well, that's why they call it a church plant. Woo! I don't like Stanley. I don't care like you and your sin either. If you are wicked, your house is going to be overthrown. Look at Israel. Look at Judah. First, second Samuel, first, second King, first, second Chronicles shows if you got a wicked house, it'll be overthrown. And you just got a merely tent and you're upright, God will bless you. There is a way, ooh, we're looking at a lot of ways today, that seemeth right unto a man. But the end there are the ways, plural. There's a way, but there are ways of death. What's that? There is the biblical definition of religion. Man has come up with religion. I've seen angels, and the angels spoke to me. Woohoo! Look at the religion. The Mormons profess to have an angel. Uh, Muhammad speaks about having an angel. The Catholics seem to have an angel. New Agers seem to have an angel. I don't know what the Jehovah Witnesses. And those men come up with a way that pleases God. And God says, the Jehovah Witness, the Mormons, Seven-day Adventists, the Catholics, and the Muslims. There are ways. A new age. There are ways. But there's, each of them has their own different way. But all together, their ways end up death. Where Jesus said, I am the way. The way of man, which is the ways of death. Jesus, I am the way, the truth. So there's got to be somebody out there lying to you. And the life, their way goes to the ways of death. He 
Even in laughter, the heart is sorrowful. And it's true. You may chuckle, but they may be laughing on the outsides. And they may be hurting in the inside. And the end of the mirth, that's that's happiness. That's true. I, you know, I always thought the, until I looked it up, mirth. That sounds like, mm. And I was surprised when I looked that word up, mirth. I was like, it meant happiness, joy. It's, eat, drink, and be merry. What it leads to, heaviness. We're going to have a church celebration. And those who have not believed on the Lord Jesus Christ ends up in sorrow and tragic and, and torment. So they went to church. There's no peace. This is why they got comedy and why comedy can't help you. It'll make you laugh for a moment. Ha ha ha, this is funny. Ha ha. And then you wake up the next morning. The comedy's done. The booze is gone. Your friends are out somewhere else. The backslider, that's the first time that word shows up in heart. Shall be filled with his own ways. Oh, there's another way. What do you mean by that? Whatever is driven him to backslide, he's going to take it with him. He's going to pack it on his pack. And he'll be all too happy to say, I left the church because... It was the pastor's fault. It was the Christian's fault. It was, you know. And you carry that heavy load on your back. And yet you're still a backslider. A good man, opposite of a backslider, shall be satisfied from himself. You know what drives you to backslide? Yourself. Get out of yourself to be a good man. You know, I was mistreated. But so was Jesus. The people of the church didn't like me. So was Paul. I was telling people about Jesus, and they wanted to kill me. Oh, boy, all 12 and Jesus Christ. You got to get out of yourself. The simple believe is every word. Woohoo! That's a bad one. The media. The listener of the media. And the average American public school. Oh, the dinosaurs. <laughs> My teacher told me one plus one equals seven. Settles it. The media said that there's this crisis. The media says... Why don't you turn off the TV, open your Bible, and pray to God and read the Bible. All right, the simple believe is every word. But the prudent, there's that prudent man again, looketh well to his goings. So a prudent man doesn't believe everything. You don't read about the prudent man. Oh, he fell for that scheme. You know, he sent a hundred dollars, then he sent a thousand dollars, then he sent ten dollars, he sent three, and he expected you know to win the lottery. That's not prudent. A simple man, oh, if I give ten dollars for that scratch card, <laughs> I'm gonna win a billion. Don't be a simpleton. 
A simpleton will believe every word of religion, but not believe the Bible. I will say that again. A simpleton will believe every word of religion, but they won't believe the Bible. Get out there and witness to Catholics, and you'll find out exactly when you open the Bible. Oh, that's not what my Pope says. That's not what the Missile says. That's not what the tradition of our church says. What does the Bible say? Well, it's your interpretation. The wise man fear it. When I grew up, I was what, 20s, 30s, maybe? I'm trying to think. I think it's 20 or 30 years old. I'm 52 now. I'll leave you to a calculator. And we had they, they had a thing it was, it was all cars. I was working with a towing company, I think. But they had the bumper stickers on cars that said, no fear. You know what you were saying when you had that no fear in your car? You were not wise. A wise man feared. You know what a person who walks, like, who barks out in the middle of the street without looking both ways? You know what the Bible says you are? You're stupid. You're a fool. Because a wise man will fear. You know what the Bible says? When you run through that red light, you're a fool. Because that red light, oh, if I run through that red light, I have chances of getting a boo-boo and losing my car. Nope. If I walk across that street and I don't check for traffic, I have a great chance of ending up in a hospital bed. And if I can sue them, but I can't sue them if I die. And the number one thing, I fear COVID virus, but I don't fear God. You're a fool. The wise man feareth and departeth from evil. Oh, there you go. That rules out, I can sin and just confess my sins and God will forgive me. No, you're going to sin, you're going to confess your sin, and that next time you're going to fight that sin. Because you fear God coming across your behind with his chastening stick, uh, Hebrews chapter 13. The world today has no fear of God and they're not departing from evil. In fact, evil's getting worse. But the fool, all right, the man that does not fear is a fool because the man that does fear is wise. The opposite of a wise man of fear is <coughs> the fool. Rageous, angry, and is confident. Just do it. Another stupid slogan. And you can preach to these people and tell them about the gospel that they're going to go to hell without belief in the finished work of Jesus. I don't care about that. I don't fear that. But I fear core virus and I got to wear the mask and I'm confident core virus rules the world. That Jesus you preach, why don't you just shut up and go home and put it in the church house? We don't want that. And then you tell them, you can wear a mask all you want. I tell them this all the time. You can wear your mask all you want. God wants you to get COVID-19. You're going to get COVID-19 even if you are wearing a mask. My mask protects me. I wash my hands. You know, I, I sing happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. I'm cleaning myself. <laughs> you see, my mask and my washing my hands, not God protects me. And the Bible says you're a fool. And confident. I am confident on the way that I'm doing that I have no hope while you've got hope and I've got confidence. Phew. He that is soon angry dealeth foolishly. And I say guilty. 
And it don't have to be angry. No, it can be you open up that letter. And listen, I'm, pre I'm preaching myself right now. I mean, when I get nervous and, and something has happened, I, I, I get to a cage line that's been injured. And you got to calm down, which the Lord's working on me. And you guys, okay, all right, now to calm down, let's look at the situation. I did that one time. Let me tell you, I did that one time. I got a letter from, from a state that I lived in, and they said, uh, I owe $20,000 in back taxes, and every day I did not pay for that tax, it was going to be interest. You better believe I got scared. Anything with taxes, I get scared. I had my fit a moment. I had my rage. And then I calmed down. And then I made the phone call. And God blessed me wonderfully. And that happened. You know, you're laying in bed. Oh, nice, good coat. And you start smelling smoke. Ah! My house is... That's a built-in fear. But there's also a thing of anger management. You get soon angry because the guy cut you off. That's a sin. Somebody stepped on your toes. Accidental. That's a sin. Again, you're getting in fist fights because somebody doesn't wear a mask. That's stupid. And a man of wicked devices is hated. Oh, we got a double whammy in that one. We got a fool and a wicked man. You know, in World War II, the world hated Adolf Hitler. Adolf Hitler wanted to kill the Jews. And the world hated him. And England and the nation fought against him. We got groups of people in America today, they want to destroy America, and the media loves them. And the media promotes them. And the presidential candidates say, we're going to do all we can do to help those people. That ought not to be so. There are people who come up with devices of torture. And they have made money. There are people who come up with pornography. And that's a device, a wicked device pornography and they made tons of money and there are many who don't hate the wicked devices of pornography matter of fact they love it but see when proverbs say the, the man of wicked devices is hated that's supposed to be the norm and if you can look at that and say, well, I know somebody who uh, they like. When you say somebody likes, well, that's against the norm. And when a man can look at a Bible verse and say, well, I like to do harm to somebody. You are, uh, you are coming of your own heart to say you're guilty. You don't stand right. The simple, oh, here's the simple again. Remember, he believes every word. Inherit folly. The folly is what follows the fool. So the simple are foolish. The folly of the simple is he, he gets conned. He falls for gimmicks and to be conned and to be swindled. He has not learned if it sounds too good to be true. I don't know whoever taught me that saying growing up. I don't know if my parents, whoever taught me if it's, if it's too good, if it sounds too good to be true, you know, that, that saying has got me through a lot of trouble in life. And there have been people I know 
who have got involved in a con job and got involved and they were swindled. And, <coughs> and they tell me the circumstance I'm like, that was just too simple to believe. Yeah, but I know. But the prudent. So the opposite of the simple is the prudent are crowned with knowledge. How do you like that one? They say that there's five crowns of a Christian. There's number six. The crown of knowledge. I don't read my Bible. Guess who's going to have a bald head of knowledge when they get the glory? How about, let's just try this one. Ready? You've died. The Lord tarries. You've died. You've gone to heaven. And you've met the Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to God. You've been absent from the body, present with the, with the Lord. And you come across loved ones, your family, and, and, and Christians that you knew. I mean, you're, you're just having a happy, good old uh, reunion in heaven until others come in the rapture. And you're, you're walking through heaven one day. You go, hi, my name is Tom. How you doing? You're, How you doing? My name is Habakkuk. Okay, yeah, nice to Habakkuk? That's the guy I met in heaven. You mean you don't recognize Habakkuk from the Bible? When you get to glory, yeah, how you doing? My name is Tom. How you doing? Yeah, I, I'm Finnehas. That's a good name. You don't recognize one of Aaron's sons, the high priest? How about this one? You get that? I'm Andrew. Oh, how you doing, Andrew? Nice day. You don't recognize the first disciple that brought Peter to Jesus? You see, you're going to get to heaven. And if you have no knowledge, you're going to meet people you never met in the Bible before. In the Bible, I met them. Now, I never met Habakkuk, but I read Habakkuk. How about this one? You're a Christian. You die, you go on to heaven, you're absent from the body, you're present with the Lord. And you're in heaven one day and, oh, what is that? What? That? What? That? What is that walking up to God's room? Oh, that's the devil. The devil's in heaven? Where'd you get that from? There'll be people going to heaven and realize they'll be quite shocked to learn that the devil's also in heaven. And they'll be real, realize that the, the, the heavenly war that's going to happen in Revelation chapter 12, that Michael and his angels and the devil and his angels are going to have a battle war. And that one third of the angels are going to say, bye, see you later, we're going to, we're going to go to hell. And Christians, and Christians, well, I didn't have that knowledge. You could have. And you could be missing the knowledge on how. Tell me the name of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. I don't know. All right, give me the name of everybody in your sports team. Oh, yeah, there was the coach. There was the assistant coach. There was, the, you know, this guy only played half the season. This guy, man, he hit that ball many times. This guy carried the ball for yards. And this guy, he broke rackets. And this guy, he broke records. This guy, man, he, he got the team into the championship play. And this guy, he retired at a certain age. And, and it, he was the second round of the college Give me the name of the 12, uh, 12 tribes of Israel. Tell me every make of automobile that Ford Company made. Oh, yeah, they made a the Mustang, they made the Falcon, they made. Where's your knowledge? Now, look at that simple there. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 1. We, we read about simple. We're going to end there. 
We're going to finish the chapter. Lord willing, tomorrow night. Look at chapter 1, verse 20. We're not going to read the whole chapter. Wisdom cried without. She utters her voice in the streets. There's a street preacher. We've read that. She cries in chief places of concourse. Daytona Beach hates that. <clears throat> in the openings of the gates in the city, she utters her words. Daytona Beach hates that. How long, ye simple ones, will you love simplicity? Simple ones are the ones you're going to preach and teach to in your public ministry. You will come across those simple ones we're reading about. Verse 32, same chapter, verse 1. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them. So, if somebody's told you all oh, people are going to heaven, they lie to you. There's a group of people called simple people, simpletons. They're going to hear you. They're going to believe every word but what you say about Jesus. And they will die in their simplicity. And without the faith and belief in Jesus Christ, they will go to hell. You better learn and study how to deal with simple people. Because you're going to meet them. Lord willing, we'll finish Proverbs 14 tomorrow night. 